Hi, good morning. I'd like to uh, go ahead and welcome all of our participants and thank you all for joining today. So my name is Sarah Ishag and I will be one of the moderators along with our CEO of Wall Street Research, Alan Stone. So as many of you may already uh, know, Wall Street Research is a 35 year old uh, research and investor relations firm. And we've been running these roadshows for quite some time now, uh, recently transitioning over to a virtual environment. So today we are presenting our client company, Pineapple Ventures Inc., which is a management company that oversees cannabis dispensaries and uh, cannabis delivery services. The focus of the offering today is on the 4,000 square foot dispensary located in the iconic Hollywood and Vine corner uh, that generates significant traffic. So you'll hear a lot more about that um, coming up. Uh, today, we're gonna have the CEO of the firm, Sean Credo, along with the president of Pineapple Ventures, Marco Rulo and uh, Josh Eisenberg, who serves as the CEO, uh, present the firm. And following the presentation, Alan will present a series of questions prior to opening up the Q&A session. So if you have any questions to all of our participants, feel free to add those into the chat box and we will attempt to get through as many as possible. So I'd just like to mention a, a quick, uh, a brief disclaimer. This is a private offering that's open to accredited investors only. Most of our participants should fall into that category. However, if you are not considered an accredited investor, we do ask if you can kindly exit the room. Your continued participation is an affirmation that you are. Also, we will be sending up follow-up emails directly following the webinar. So for those of you who may have serious inquiries regarding the offering, um, you could be in touch with the team directly. And with that being said, I'll go ahead and pass it over to, to Alan Stone. Yeah, good, good morning. Uh, thank you very much, Sarah. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, we'd like to welcome uh, Pineapple Ventures, Inc. to our Wall Street Research uh, uh, webinar. And uh, I'd like to thank the, uh, the company and their management team for joining us today. We have a very exciting uh, company that's emerged in the, in the cannabis industry in Los Angeles, which has a really top-notch uh, dispensary and delivery uh, uh, company, and uh, they're expanding and growing very, very fast. Uh, they have a number of other operations that they'll get into during their presentation. And uh, uh, basically, they're well-positioned to become uh, perhaps the Amazon of the uh, cannabis uh, online uh, delivery uh, business here in uh, in uh, Southern California, particularly in the in the Los Angeles market, and uh, which is which is the number one market for cannabis in the in the United States, if not the world, and uh, uh, they've got a very impressive team, uh, core management team, uh, who you'll meet today in a presentation. So um, uh, we're waiting for get some more of our participants to come come on the call, and. Uh, we're going to, the management is going to take you through their PowerPoint presentation, and then we'll have a series of questions and answers that uh, both myself and Sarah will, will moderate. And, uh, and then at that point, uh, we will uh, uh, turn it back over to Sarah to take questions from the audience in the chat room. And, uh, and then we should wrap up around new types. So, uh, so that's the agenda for, for today. And uh, at this point, uh, uh, you know, welcome everyone's participation and uh, thanks again for, for joining us for our regular webinar series. And uh, I'll at this point, turn it back over to, uh, uh, to Sean Cradell, who's the CEO. Uh, and he's joined with uh, Josh Eisenberg and Marco Rulo, uh, who are the top executives of the company. Thanks a lot, Alan, appreciate it. Uh, thanks, uh, Sarah, and also Mark. Uh, it's great working with you guys. Uh, of course, my team, Marco Rulo, who's the president, and uh, Joshua Eisenberg, who is the chief operating officer, along with myself as a CEO. Uh, Sean Cradle, just uh, like a baby's cradle. I know it's spelled differently because uh, 
like my parents want to confuse everybody or put that on me when I was growing up. So, <laughs> uh, but again, I appreciate everyone for uh, participating and uh, look forward to, I hope everyone's doing safe and having a great year, uh, start of the year so far. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and jump right into our, our presentation. If I can get that popped up and queued up for me. There we go. Uh, so uh, again, I, uh, you know, Pineapple Ventures Inc. is a, a management company that is also partners with Pineapple Inc., which is a, uh, which is a public uh, company. Um, we all, we, we're all in bed together and we own the trademarks uh, and our three fastest divisions are at the bottom of the screen there, Pineapple Express, which is a uh, statewide California uh, distribution of THC products. So you could think of us as a mobile dispensary as opposed to your brick and mortars. We carry all these, uh, all the, uh, the brands that everyone likes to see, but uh, in, in terms of LA, we're able to get to most folks in under two hours in most cases, and we accept uh, credit and debit as well. Um, we also uh, carry our in-house brand, which is in the middle there, and is also our trademark, which you'll see as THC. I'll get into these brands a little bit more later in the uh, presentation, but very lightly, uh, we carry uh, a THC as our in-house premium brand and also our, uh, our, uh, the face of our merchandise line, along with Pineapple Wellness, which is a uh, nationwide distribution home delivery of CBD only, uh, hemp derived uh, CBD products, uh, uh, health and beauty products, ranging from anything from cosmetics to cat and dog treats. Go ahead and uh, next slide, please, Josh. So uh, our mission at Pineapple is to deliver quality cannabis products to an, e an excellent service at competitive prices to our consumers. So with sustainability at our core, we'll continue to grow our organization with the same integrity and transparency that we use to uh, cultivate our products. Uh, so our core values, it comes really down to these four C's, uh, compassion for our consumers, uh, commitment to produce quality products with integrity and care, consistency to deliver fast and dependable service, and the courage to be an industry leader. All these things mean something to us at Pineapple, um, especially compassion for our consumers as we're consumers ourselves. Uh, so, you know, for, for a range of different uh, 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 for a range of different reasons, you know, myself being a Marine Corps veteran, and having to have dealt with uh, certain levels of PTSD in the past, uh, cannabis has definitely helped me, uh, you know, be on the straight and narrow instead of, you know, other other means. Uh, so uh, we we definitely, you know, it, it's in house. It hits home with all of us. Our commitment is to, uh, you know, we love to provide consistency. Uh, consistency begets results, and that's what keeps people not only converged but uh, staying in our in our in our ecosystem in our environment. Uh, so, you know, and encourage to be an entry leader. This is very, um, this is something that I, I spearhead for the company, along with the help of uh, and the support of everyone in the chain of command is, uh, you know, we like to, we want to be like, you know, you mentioned, Alan, the, the Amazon of, uh, you know, cannabis delivery. I'd like to go a step further. And, and I like to say, you know, we, we like to be the, the Philip Morris's of, of this certain industry. Uh, the Anheuser Bushes of of this industry, uh, so you know we're trying to set a tone, and we do that a lot uh, with a lot of our affiliations and our national presence. Uh, next next slide, please. Uh, I'm going to turn this slide over to Josh. Um, he is our, um, you know, he he's he's our COO, but also he acts as our CCO, our Chief Compliance Officer, making sure that we're on the straight and arrow with everything that's going on in the market. So Josh, I'll let you go ahead and kick off this slide here. Thank you, Sean. Well, starting with the obvious, uh, we have uh, a really solid trajectory of market growth. Uh, the California cannabis market is projected to reach 7 billion by 2024. And really, um, we're gonna see a lot of legislative changes that are gonna have a positive impact to make that happen. On the state level, they are uh, conglomerating the state uh, cannabis entities to make them one, and one entity, as well as uh, streamlining the tax situation, which is going to make the tax situation a lot more uh, cost effective for the consumer, which is important. Uh, while delivery is expected to make up 37% of transactions by 2022, uh, cannabis following that is definitely following that trend, um, if not more so. We saw a lot of movement toward delivery in 2020, especially with the COVID crisis. And we have seen a lot of consumers um, 
stick with delivery and not go back to storefronts even as they've begun to open their doors. So we expect that trend to continue a bit uh, as well. Uh, with the cannabis market, uh, I'd say one of the most important things to realize is that the retail licenses are bottlenecked at the municipal level. So the fact that there that, that is the reason that there are less than a thousand retail licenses in the state of California. And I think a pertinent fact is before Prop 64 went into place, there were about 15,000 uh, retail entities on weed maps that were serving the public. And now that the supply has been reduced to less than a thousand, uh, it has given us an, a huge opportunity to dig in our heels in the Los Angeles market. Um, the regulatory compliance and legal requirements, of course, demand experienced operators with uh, deep market knowledge. And we have built a team that is ready to uh, capitalize on our experience, as well as the wonderful opportunity that we have with the retail licenses. So that being said, uh, let me pass it off to Marco. Let's go back to the slide right right before yeah. Josh. Just uh, wait for my slide transitions, please. No um, I just want to I just want to elaborate a little bit here and talk about how delivery really uh, you know this this number of thirty seven percent. This is not th these numbers uh, you know and, and in terms of data. And I come from a data background. The, the thing to understand is these are not these are not involved with uh, th these have no implications of COVID. And that crisis that you know we, we're, we're still in and that we've, we've gone across for the last year um you know so this number i would expect to inflate even more we just don't have enough data to support that and raise those numbers so we're going to be conservative here but i i would say those are getting into the 40s uh simply because this is now a new normal once we it's, it, you know especially once we get past this pandemic people you know one thing about us we were primed to take on this responsibility to deliver cannabis during a stay-at-home order in California, so our sales, you know, doubled and tripled on 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 a lot of days in April, throughout May, and into the summer, and those numbers have stayed that way because our convergence rate has has stayed steady. Because once people use our service, once they realize, okay, I can still get the same product that I would get at my dispensary that I would have to drive to and find parking, and LA traffic, they also take credit and debit, which a lot of brick and mortars still don't do. Uh, so when you can actually have something, you know, that you want under two hours in most cases, or you can literally schedule your delivery for next day or the same day, it just makes it, you know, I, you know, I always said once people use our, our service, then they would understand. And we're transparent, not only inside of the organization, we're, we're transparent outside. So we don't hide fees. Uh, you know, everything is straightforward. So I would see this, this even ramping up. So when this happened, uh, you know, when this pandemic happened, it was actually, um, you know, I, I mix feelings about it, but it was fortunate for our industry and, and our business, especially uh, being primed that we were doing delivery, home delivery for over a year, um, you know, before the pandemic hit. Uh, so even those even those brick and mortars that were able by the state to either do temporary delivery or curbside pickup, they were not ready. They didn't have the logistics or the know how to do it. So we, you know, we were able to, you know, piggyback off of that and, and, and grab those, uh, you know, those clients that are continuing to stay in our wheelhouse to this day. So, you know, I would expect that number with delivery to go up, you know, even more. And, and obviously it's not just in cannabis, it's across the board with Instacart, you know, and, and, and deliveries for groceries and things of the like. People need that convenience a lot more. And they don't want to, and, you know, until this pandemic is over, and even when it's over, people will still have that, you know, that, um, on, on the little stigma of going into crowded places, you know, and especially if they can get cannabis delivered, it's not life or death. So I'd rather go ahead and, you know, do that. So I just want to just just uh, give a little more credence to the delivery uh, bullet point. If we can go to the next slide, please. Thank you, Thanks, Josh. So I'm going to hand over the next slide to uh, my president, Marco Rulo, who's going to go ahead and explain. Uh, a couple of these competitive advantages that we have. Yeah, um, <clears throat> thanks, Sean. And, and I want to thank everyone for joining us here today. Um, I think Sean and both Josh have done a, a really great job explaining what our competitive advantage is in the marketplace as it pertains to our delivery service. Um, <clears throat> with that infrastructure that we have in place, 
that takes care of everything that would be upstream supply chain that leads us to our Hollywood and Vine location. Um, the unique thing about this offering at Hollywood and Vine is really the location itself. Um, being one of only 284 legal dispensaries in Los Angeles is one thing. Being on the corner of a, an iconic location such as Hollywood and Vine, where there's over 25 million people who pass through that corner on an annual basis, is something entirely different. We were very fortunate, and I think Josh can speak on this a little bit later, um, to actually obtain this license. And it's attracted a lot of attention. Um, so when you take that and you layer that on top of what Sean and Josh had already spoken about, which is the experience of our operations, the fleet of compliant fuel efficient vehicles and the power of our brands right there, it really makes it a compelling and attractive offering that is unique in the cannabis space right now. And especially here in Los Angeles, in so much as we have the existing infrastructure, we've done brick and mortar, we've done retail storefront, we know what it takes to bring customers in, we know what it takes to retain customers, and we know what it takes to build and build brand equity. And with, with that in mind, some of the brands that we have, and, and we're going to talk about a little bit more, um, have really already received some incredible visibility. And as you see at the bottom of this page here, some of the outlets that have featured our brands, and I'm going to let Sean talk a little bit more about that, because this is really the area that um, he's helped drive forward with our company and gain national recognition. Thanks, Marco. Um, can you can you speak to in terms of our, you know, our operators are, you know, our, our essential virtual bud tenders, uh, you know, the focus of customer service, as opposed to, you know, maybe other uh, brick and mortars that you would walk into the level of, of um, professionalism that I and you command out of these folks. Um, can you speak a little bit about to that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for us as a company, for Pineapple Express and Pineapple Ventures, and Pineapple Ventures is a management company that um, oversees the operations of all um, of our managed entities. It all starts with customer service. And the end goal, as Sean touched on previously, being customer retention. So with every customer we keep in the Pineapple ecosystem, it's one less customer we have to acquire. And we know that the cost of customer acquisition will never be less expensive than it is right now. So once we see our customer retention increasing and accordingly our customer lifetime value, then we're able to really optimize and shift our focus on optimizing our funnel and hitting our ROI targets across all our channels. Um, in our customer acquisition efforts, our North Star is to really attach, like Sean said, we're data-driven. So a success metric to every campaign now, whether that's social, digital, referral, affiliate, SMS, or email, we have established benchmarks for each channel, and we adjust our efforts to, to maximize our return. Um, our current LTV to CAC is well about above the uh, standard e-commerce benchmarks, and we're always taking the measures that we need to improve in that area. And, and definitely the focus is on customer service. It's on being accurate, on-time delivery. And we take that knowledge that we have of how to treat the customers, how to retain the customers. We put that into a retail environment. We already have proven experience and leadership who knows how to execute. And we're able to then just pour fuel on the fire with the location that's Hollywood and Vine. It doesn't require a, a whole lot of, it's not a heavy lift to get people into that store. Um, we have a huge amount of visibility and tailwinds are behind us especially in, as Josh said, in this uh, regulatory climate um, with the current restrictions in terms of COVID, we have pickup windows, curbside pickups. So as Sean spoke about, <clears throat> while some dispensaries are struggling just to meet the, the, the needs of the, the public in this current climate, we're already ahead of the game there. And it's plug and play for us as we open up this Hollywood and Vine dispensary. Absolutely. Thanks, Marco. Um, yeah, you know, we, we, we've already had like just this was Marco just ended with we already have a proven model that we can cookie cutter and 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 use throughout the, uh, you know, th throughout wherever we want to go, not just in uh, this state, but beyond once uh, we're legally able to, um, you know, at the bottom of the screen, there are notable mentions, uh, you know, we, we've really 
especially in this year, um, you know, and essentially catapulted uh, into media in terms of uh, TMZ. You know, I had a, we had a campaign with, um, we had a, we lost our late spokesperson, uh, Tiny Lister, um, who played uh, Devo on the movie Friday series and was uh, Zeus in the WWE and with Hulk Hogan and things of that nature. Uh, we had an idea uh, at the stay at home order we had an idea to bring some joy to uh, to folks that 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 couldn't that had to stay home. However, we were still delivering to folks, so we decided since uh, April of 2020 was essentially the whole month was 4:20, uh, and every Friday uh, a contest winner won a lucky visit from him, Debo, delivering their cannabis product for free. Uh, we had a lot of vendors that wanted to jump on board. And uh, we were able to do that um, very successfully to, to the note of uh, the tune of TMZ catching, um, catching wind of that. And we had a nice, uh, I believe it was a 30 second segment on the TV show and a follow up, uh, uh, the follow up interview that appeared on the web about a month later um, as we were getting more into that campaign. So we started doing that and they picked us up about maybe three times last year as we were doing deliveries uh, home deliveries uh, to uh, folks, not just in April, but for uh, Father's Day, for Mother's Day, for Memorial Day, and uh, Halloween, and all the way up until Veterans Day. Uh, we were going to do a Christmas one, but he, he just passed in December. Uh, so that campaign really um, brought a lot of joy to people. A lot, a lot of folks were, were stuck at home. One guy we delivered to, it was his birthday, and he was supposed to fly to the Caribbean for the first time. And he got stuck and he said, well, you know, this is a heck of a constellation. So we, we've gotten a lot of uh, press that way. We've actually, once that's not listed here is uh, Power 106 and K-Day. We were actually, we made a little radio history here in California being the, uh, the first and only delivery service uh, cannabis company on the radio waves. Obviously that's, uh, that's touching on the, the fringe of FCC uh, violations. However, deemed as an essential business, we were able to, well, the the radio station was able to uh, put us in there uh, because it was a PSA announcement and centered around that, uh, having folks stay home and order uh, Pineapple Express. So they chose us for this. We didn't, um, we didn't apply. They chose us because we are, we are known in California, um, again, for being an awesome delivery service, but it's actually the organization and the folks you see on this call uh, that are running the company doing these things the right way and on the up and up. So um, they didn't want to get embarrassed. So they picked us and they knew we, we weren't going to embarrass them um, because that goes along with another bullet point there for Benzinga Capital. I, I sit on their National Cannabis Advisory Council along with notables such as uh, John Sally and Al Harrington. Uh, we, you know, we, we're, we're, we're thought leaders in this industry and, and this is at a high level, not just for Cali, but uh, for, for, the, for the country. And, uh, you know, as, you know, as we sit here, and this is the not just the the largest market in the in the uh, country; it, it is the largest market in the world. So people are watching what we do from afar, um, and and they're you know the, these folks uh, see what we're doing, and we're able to write thought articles uh, and thought pieces that have been picked up by the Wall Street Journal, that have been picked up by Yahoo Finance, um, and certain writings that I've done on on the future of what I think uh, is going to happen with the future of the cannabis industry. So. Um, I'm a, I'm a contributor to, to, uh, to those as well. Fortune magazine in 2019, uh, had us, had us in, uh, features us twice in that same year. Uh, and, uh, in December of 2019, uh, sorry, we were the only cannabis company in the investment guide to 2020. Uh, and that, that spoke volumes for us and, 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 and notably what happened in that same month, um, you'll see a market watch plug right there next to Benzinga. The rapper, the pop star rapper uh, Drake, he tried to trademark THC, uh, actually for Canada, and uh, we own the trademark. Obviously, as I mentioned in this uh, in the beginning of this presentation, so we own the trademark THC, and no no one really knew it, and obviously they didn't know it, and they got denied, even though it's for Canada. But we we share the same trademark laws across uh, you know across the two places because we're so close. So. That's another licensing play that we can get into, and we have been in talks with those folks as well. Um, you know, and, and uh, LA Weekly. Uh, you know, Marco, can you speak to our presence in LA Weekly? I think we were we were featured twice, right? This uh, this this last. 
exactly. Um, LA Weekly, which is a really popular publication here in Los Angeles and has been for, for many decades, um, they have a best of LA issue that they put out. Uh, in addition to that, they also have a best of cannabis issue that they put out. So we were really fortunate that they reached out to us um, because of some of our brand recognition. And, and I guess a lot of people on their staff had actually received deliveries from us um, and they were pretty pleased with the service. So they gave us an opportunity to be showcased in a couple of their issues, actually two of them. Um, and we were able to talk about our operations. We were able to talk about what our key differentiators are in, in the cannabis space, because there's no shortage of, of cannabis delivery services here, here in Los Angeles. But uh, you know what you have is, is you have a, a top five that are um, established, professional, um, doing things the right way, um, staying on the right side of legality, and really making consumers happy. And then you have everybody else. Uh, turns out, unfortunately for us, and, and by design, um, we're one of those top five. Um, and due to the relationship and the visibility that we've had with uh, in and amongst the uh, LA community, we were featured in two of those. I got an opportunity actually to speak a little bit about our team and, and, and some of our uh, middle managers and some of our, uh, even, even some of our, our general staff and who's really the backbone of, of our organization. And that's, that's one of Sean's driving principles is, is team and putting the people that work for us in an environment that allows them to succeed. So um, that was one of the things that we really had a, a pleasure to, uh, to speak about. In addition to, to what we do on a day-to-day -day basis by, by making people happy by showing up with cannabis, um, we really have a, have a team that is the face of, although Sean is the face of the corporation and, and I run the internal operations, um, what's key to us and our success is the people that we have, the, the boots on the ground. Um, so our customer service team and our delivery drivers. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Marco. Um, yeah, there is you know, your biggest resource in any company or corporation is your human resource. Uh, and I, I'm a firm uh, believer in that. I also was a, a college professor and I taught leadership and entrepreneurship at the organizational level. So that's something that, um, you know, I sh I'm, I'm, I'm happy that not only my team shares, but they also feel the same way uh, that it's true. I'm the face of the organization, but customers and consumers, they don't know who I am. They know the drivers. Uh, and they're the face. And, and, and if, if we can, um, you know, include them in a lot of the operations or a lot of the, the policies that we're putting in place, they feel a part of this company and what they do matters. And that's very important. That's very important. So uh, thanks for that, Marco. Next slide, please, Josh. All right. So, um, so here is the, uh, you know, Hollywood and Vine. Uh, so, this again, this is literally on the corner of the, uh, the famous Hollywood and Vine intersection. You have, uh, you know, at the bottom right uh, picture there, you have Capitol Records literally right behind it. It's a very historic building, it used to be the Red Fox uh, back in the 30s, I believe, um, where they, uh, they actually had, you know, some cool uh, pickup windows um, that they used to bake pies and they would send them on the, you know, send them on the, the windowsill. Uh, so we're actually going to continue and use those and, and revamp those for our actual curbside pickup window um, at Hollywood and Vine, which, uh, you know, which is also going to serve not just passerbys, but this location sits on the bottom and you'll see in that second, to, uh, I think it's the bottom, uh, let me see here, where the Hollywood and Vine sign is, it's, it's, it's second to the last uh, image, black and white. That high rise, uh, we sit on the bottom of that. And that's about 200, over 200 units that folks that are almost instant customers because uh, there is no other uh, dispensary within about three square miles of that location. So we really capture that, uh, you know, capture that, that, that audience uh, with the folks that, that literally on top of us that would come down and, uh, you know, and, and I, would, I, would, I would gather that majority of those folks um, would become instant, instant consumers. The next, um, and, and actually the building that's next to us is actually about to be torn down and they are building within a two year, two to three year span, another mid-rise uh, apartment complex. So that's again, uh, a lot more uh, you know, organic traffic that we don't really have to market to, we're just there. Um, but it also sits 
directly, and it's and, and this 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 four thousand square feet retail dispensary. Um, you know, we're we're trying to uh, next slide, please, Josh. We're trying to uh, make this the. Oh, I don't think it was that one. Let me go back. And you know what, Josh? I think we missed the new renderings in this one. So you may have to pull up that PowerPoint really fast, and I'll go ahead and keep talking. Um, so what we're trying to do is, you know, I'm, the vision here we have, and, and certainly the central point for me, is to try to create the Planet Hollywood experience of retail cannabis dispensary. Um, you know, with, with a location like this, it has to be, you know, it has to be awesome. It has to be big. It has to be, has to have a lot of flair. You know, this is literally the corner of Hollywood and Vine here. So, you know, as we do this, um, there you go, Josh. Yeah, there we go. So here, this is the vision here, folks. Um, you know, as you see with with the uh, the pickup windows right here to the left, and the line really to get in, we're going to create that 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 velvet rope type experience uh, to where passerbys are like, you know, what's what's going on inside of there. O obviously, we're on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and we're actually going to continue that Walk of Fame right into the dispensary, where we're going to. There's going to be a multitude of different, um, you know, stars that we'll give to investors, uh, key investors, and uh, you know, obviously some of these celebrities that have, uh, you know, had a big uh, influence on the cannabis industry, such as like a Snoop Dogg, for instance, uh, who is also very interested in, in what we're doing. And I'll get to the celebrity cachet that we have later on, um, but also to brands. You know, brands will have real estate here to to rent basically a, a star, um, you know, on terms of, you know, however long, you know, three month terms or things like that. So, um, so we're really trying to capture that, you know, that whole experience. Go ahead to the next slide, Josh, please. And as you can see there again, uh, you know, this is just more of the renderings for, uh, you know, for our, our velvet rope type of experience. You, you, you'll see there, it's not a red carpet, it's a green carpet for obvious reasons. Next slide, Josh. This is uh, more the inside here. So we're again, we're we're trying to uh, create this, you know, this glitz and glamour. Um, all actually, you know, it's very. You wouldn't. You would think it's very expensive, but we actually, uh, you know, we we were able to procure uh, through the help of uh, Marco and Josh. We were helped. We were able to procure a lot of, uh, you know, these supplies. Um, you know, they they know a lot of people around these around this industry, so it was very helpful. Uh, for us to get a construction company that was willing to work with us and, and get this thing uh, built very fast um, in, a, in, a, in about a four month span. So we'll have a step and repeat there as well. Next slide, Josh. All right, so go back just one more, Josh. I just wanna have folks go ahead and take a, take a little bit uh, more talk about the vision there, but at the same time, a little, to give a little more uh, you know, credence to this location, again, uh, it sits on the corner of Hollywood and Vine. You have uh, 200 plus uh, units uh, above this location. You also have uh, a mid-rise that's going to have at least 140 units that's going to pop up in the next three years, literally right next door. You have Capitol Records, the iconic Capitol Records, in the backdrop there. Um, and what I and and, and what that what that means is you have tours, you know, obviously the, the tours and the, the, you know, the drop top tours and the bus tours, they all go by these locations. Uh, so what, you know, so that's how the indirect, uh, you know, um, advantages that we have with Capitol Records being right there. It also sits directly across the street from the highest grossing Starbucks in LA. I mean, I'm sorry, in California rather. Uh, so we have a lot of people, foot traffic, organic foot traffic. It's right across the street from the W uh, and it's uh, also right across the street from the train metro station. So there's a lot of people that are, and, and I'm sorry, and it, and it sits, um, there's, a, there's a bus stop, right? That stops right in front of the, uh, right in front of the dispensary. And that has about, I believe it's 11 routes a day. So you'll have people that'll just have no choice but to stop and look and see what's going on and, and want to venture in. And that's honestly just, that's even before we pump money into marketing. You know, that's just organic foot traffic just because of the location uh, that is as famous as Times Square and Rodeo Drive. You know, everyone knows this place, even if they've never been here. Uh, so go ahead to the next slide, Josh. It, 
froze. Give me a second. There we go. No worries. All right. So, um, so again, I just want to dive a little bit more into the brands, and and um, if I miss anything, Marco, feel free to jump in. But in terms of uh, you know Pineapple Express, uh, you know we own the trademark Pineapple Express. We also own the trademark THC, and we have PineappleExpress.com. That's where you would go to you know order your uh, your cannabis products delivered to you at home. Uh, THC again is our in-house brand. And uh, that's, our, that's our premium label for our in-house flower. Again, we are totally uh, a vertical company. We have over 14 uh, vertical licenses. Uh, so we, we do everything from cultivation to manufacturing to distribution to retail dispensary and obviously delivery, which is our main model right now. Uh, and uh, THC is also the, the label uh, for our in-house, uh, for our merchandise line, for our, 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 our merchandise, our swag and things of that nature. Uh, so again, the Hollywood and Vine dispensary popping up would be our flagship uh, dispensary. And, uh, I, and I explained all these things before about the cache that we have. One thing that um, I, can, I can say, and you guys stop me, Marco and Josh, if, if you think I'm, I'm going over here, but I believe there is no other cannabis company on the planet that has a celebrity cache collectively that we do. Am I, am I right in saying that? I'm in total agreement with that. Right. Um, the number of, of the number of celebrities, and obviously being here in Los Angeles, um, which is is one of the celebrity capitals uh, of the world, the number of celebrities that have been attracted to us, either by some of Sean's mission-driven outreach, uh, or by the efficacy and the um, operational expertise of any one of our, our multiple business units um, has actually made it very attractive. So uh, if, and, and I'd like to get into this later, but um, what we try and do in addition to our delivery service is also disrupt the way in which customers receive cannabis. So some of the initiatives that we've taken on are pickup locations, uh, our delivery in, to a lot of celebrity events. Um, so this has given us visibility and it's given us really credibility in the, uh, in the celebrity marketplace here. And that has had a reciprocal effect by just driving brand awareness. So brand awareness, not only of Pineapple Express, but you'll see celebrities wearing THC branded merchandise and they're requesting it from us all the time. And we have a line of celebrities that have been in queue to get in on this Hollywood and Vine dispensary. Um, they're gonna rename, remain nameless for now, but if we said their names, they would be definitely A-list people and, and, and would need no introduction. Um, so everything that, that Sean is talking about here in terms of, of the potency of our brands, um, pun definitely intended, uh, is that uh, it's had a synergistic effect on everything that we do. And, and, and when we do, expand when we, when we do uh, create new ventures we always want to rely on the infrastructure we have in place to leverage that operational efficiency and then take that and plug and play it into another area where we're able to limit our capex and our opex and leverage what we can already have in place absolutely yeah yeah absolutely we can we can and you know that's that's also for potential investors that uh we're coming in for the the last bit of offering that we do have is they would be in bed with uh, some of these folks, some of these high high celebrity um, folks that once Hollywood and Vine does open, you would certainly know who they are because they are going to obviously market on their huge platforms and followings because it's their investment uh, as well. So that's one of the, you know, it's nice to have celebrities on your team, but honestly for us, the biggest thing is if they're in bed with us, then obviously they're gonna help us promote and market as well with their own teams and their own dime. You know, so it's, it's and, and we do have, um, yeah, I, I, like Marco said, um, I think the majority of them would need no introduction. And it's not just, uh, you know, uh, it's entertainment, but not just in music, not just actors, but we also have current playing uh, uh, professional uh, sports figures that are actually currently playing right now across the multiple sports. Uh, so that would like to remain nameless for obvious reasons. So we, we feel, you know, and, and honestly, this, this is the first time we're actually 
even putting this really out there. I mean, I would say this is not entirely public. This is kind of sub-public because it's an invite only thing. But um, before this, we, we really didn't market it at all. We just opened the, uh, just opened the Rolodex, so to speak. So um, I, I was able to, through um, you know, a couple of connections, a couple of big connection people in, um, in this space, uh, I was able to be presented to these celebrities and pitch exactly how I'm pitching to you folks. Uh, and they didn't see why not we should come in here and where the heck were you guys? We kind of came out of nowhere, but we were flying under the radar. So um, it's kind of hard to stay out of the, the, the spotlight right now be, simply because of that celebrity cachet that we do, that we do carry. So uh, next slide, please, Josh. I think we skipped the, our management team. Is that right or no? Is that the next slide? Ah, there we go. Okay, let's go back. All right. Uh, so just a little update here. Um, you know what, Josh? Yeah, this one. So now this one has a 3 million. In it. But I'll explain. Don't worry about it. We just had a little technical difficulties with our presentation, but that's all right. So, um, and, you know, and all right, there you go. There you go, buddy. See you. You got the right people, quick on the draw. You see that? That's a Wharton grad, by the way, folks. So he's an Ivy Leaguer, so there's a, there's a reason why he's on the team. Uh, it's not just that, Josh, we like you. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but anyways, so the offering with Hollywood and Vine, um, and I, ex I explained basically these two, uh, first two paragraphs. Right now, um, we, we, you know, we, we switched back over here because we did, we did have about 30% um, left. And, and now we have about 20% uh, left because uh, news just came out that we actually had a, a major, a big major celebrity go ahead and uh, scoop up about 10% overnight last night. So we had to really scramble to update this so we can give you guys the, uh, the actual factuals here. Uh, so we have two main offering. Um, basically we're selling each point for $100,000 into, uh, into this venture. Uh, and uh, one of our, we have three major key factors when we have direct investments. Um, and the main reason for these is up until about, I would say a year and a half ago, we were all self-funded. We were all entrepreneurs and we'll get into our backgrounds in the next slide. Um, but you no, know, that's the beauty about us. We don't, we don't have debt. Uh, so we just started taking uh, outside investment just about a year and a half ago, just to fund these projects so we can get up, we can stand them up quicker. Uh, so right now we're doing a percent like I said, uh, for hundred thousand dollars into into this dispensary, um, and uh, and this will help us, you know, stand this up. Hopefully, even faster. We're trying to really hard to um, right now. We're on course to complete and open these doors by end of March, uh, which would be just in time for uh, April and being four twenty uh, and such. Um, it'd be cool if we can get it done right before uh, uh, St. Patty's Day, which is a green holiday. But um, you know we'll we'll be a little conservative here. Um, three major uh, facets that uh, most investors uh, pretty much jump in bed with us is because uh, first of all there's there's a uh, anti delusion, so it doesn't matter how many people are in bed with us. Your one percent is a true one percent. All right. Um, we also pay monthly dividends. We don't hold on to money. Uh, so we as soon as we're profitable. We start paying out monthly dividends to everyone, and everyone can see that's full transparent. So they'll actually see how we're doing on a monthly basis. And the third, and and, and the, probably the biggest bullet point um, that attracts uh, everyone, I, I believe, and this is the feedback we've got, is that uh, we have put option rights. So after a year, uh, if you do not like or see like what you see, or like how we're managing the company, or like does don't like uh, your your monthly dividends, or for whatever reason, really. Uh, it doesn't have to be because of us. It could be because of you. Maybe you had a life-changing event uh, and you need to cash out. We do offer a put option right uh, after a year so you can opt out and you'll get back 110% of your original investment. And key point is you'll get to keep those uh, dividends that you've made over the course of that year. So if you put in 100 grand, you'll get 110 grand back plus whatever you, know, you keep. We're not going to ask for any money back. That for the money that you've made over that year, um, that that honestly is is because we're all we these are the things that as entrepreneurs would make us feel good, 
And uh, to this day, we have, I don't have any wood around. That's wood. Uh, we haven't had anyone bopped out. So uh, because we do things the right way. And the key factor is folks, is the next slide, Josh. This is why uh, we, we actually stand out uh, amongst our, you know, amongst our peers is our management team. Um, thankfully, three out of four of us are on the call, so I don't have to explain everyone's background. So I'll, I'll just uh, touch on myself for a second. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in this call, I'm a Marine Corps veteran. I served uh, 99 to 03 Operation Enduring Freedom, and uh, I've obtained uh, four master's degrees uh, post 9-11, uh, the last one of which is, uh, is, is an organizational and global uh, leadership in corporate governance. Uh, so I, 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 and I've also shadowed the CEO of Netta Health Group for five, four or five years, which is obviously the largest healthcare provider in the country. Uh, I've also, um, I was a college professor out of Miami. I taught leadership and entrepreneurship for four years to uh, senior undergrads. Uh, I was a broker in Miami as well. Uh, I owned a small hotel in Puerto Rico, which is also where I'm from. Uh, and um, I think that's about it for me. Um, and I have, uh, you know, I've served in uh, nonprofit, for-profit education, both staff and faculty. Uh, so I pretty much have a good array of, you know, in terms of the workforce and dealing with certain, uh, uh, you know, different people. I've worked in Europe for a while as well. Uh, I finished my first master's in Europe and in, uh, in Nuremberg, Germany. Uh, so, you know, in terms of people, um, these are the things that I've always told my students first day of class. If they never listen to anything I said for the whole 16 weeks, at least walk out of here knowing this. If you don't know people, you don't know business uh, because you not, only need to, you not only need to have people to buy the crap you're selling, you need people to sell the crap you're selling. So that's why, again, human resources is uh, you know, our biggest asset and it should be for any corporation. Um, so you know, people don't buy typically what you're selling, they buy why you're selling what you're selling. Uh, because again, you know, everyone can sell cannabis. Anyone can, you know, uh, you know, well, it's, whether it's traditional or, or legal, people can do that. What sets you apart? And it starts at the top, you know? So I'll let Marco go ahead and uh, introduce himself and his background as well. Yeah, thanks, Sean. Um, I'm Marco Rulo. I'm the president of Pineapple Ventures. I've uh, been in the cannabis space for eight years um, in senior leadership positions. I joined Pineapple Ventures about one year ago, um, coming from a uh, multi-state operator. And um, prior to that, I uh, come from mainstream corporate America, um, senior executive across multiple verticals in CPG, health and wellness, um, international commerce, manufacturing and logistics. And my main focus is on organizational development and uh, general management. I have an MBA from Bocconi University in Milano, Italy, uh, which I'm originally from, um, in behavioral economics. And one of the things that's been great about, about coming here is definitely the team that, that we have to work with. And in my tenure here, I've seen both uh, Josh, who's on this call right here, and, and Steve, who's our chief revenue officer, continue to grow and expand, um, take on greater responsibilities. And help us drive forward, um, always with our North Star being profitability. So um, as Sean had touched on earlier, is that we don't have any debt. Um, so from the beginning, as we built out our infrastructure, uh, as we prepare to scale, we're always looking at, at, at profitability first. Um, a lot of companies, what I've seen in the cannabis space is, 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 is really they lack focus and they get out over their skis and try and look for avenues to customer acquisition and don't focus on, uh, on the customer retention. Don't focus on um, building out infrastructure that works and that scales and then operational uh, efficiency um, to support that. So um, that's where our focus is here. And one of the people who's definitely key to that success um, is Josh Eisenberg, um, our chief operating officer. And uh, I'll go ahead and uh, let him uh, give a little background. Thank you, Sean and Marco. Um, got a wonderful education background with Wharton and did some short stints in management, marketing, consulting. Ultimately, I wanted to jump straight out into the entrepreneurial world after 
shortly after college and discovered the world of cannabis. Uh, been, I started a delivery service in 2011 here in California and have been intimately involved in the network and regulations and uh, lobbying at times uh, in the state. I've uh, been a, a very uh, involved with the California Cannabis Industry Association. I'm vice president of the California Cannabis Couriers Association, and uh, I stay very involved on the, the local and state regulatory levels to make sure that uh, we, that regulations are going in the direction that we want and that we are prepared for anything to come up in the future. Um, through my tenure at Pineapple, I have become a compliance expert and I appreciate my time here very, very much for that. I wouldn't give it up for anything. Um, it goes hand in hand with the operational aspects and I'm very grateful to have um, a wonderful team at Pineapple to work with and to collaborate with and really make our vision a reality. It's, it's been an absolute pleasure, so yeah, thank you. Thanks, Josh. Um, I'll lightly touch on Steve, <clears throat> who, uh, who couldn't join us today, but because uh, he's out doing exactly what his title says. He's, he's trying to <laughs> make more revenue for us. So, uh, so Steve's in the trenches right now. Um, but, you know, Steve works hand in hand with, uh, you know, with, with Marco and with Josh, um, you know, systematically trying to drive, you know, revenue, whatever that means. It can mean marketing plays. It can mean products or, or this, that, and the other, but Steve has a, a very good background in, in the, uh, the pharmaceutical domain where he's, he's going to help us along with, uh, you know, he's not on board yet, but we are actually uh, bringing on board our, our first chief medical officer. Uh, and his name is also Steve. So Dr. Steve and Steve are going to work hand in hand and, uh, you know, we're going to develop and cultivate a telemedicine uh, program so where folks can call and schedule five-minute consultations and Dr. Steve will be able to uh, you know to to recommend certain products for their specific ailments uh, and that can be um, from from anywhere from uh, you know how, how, how they would receive it to you know the dosage and milligrams and, and so on and so forth uh, so you know Steve is um, you know definitely pivotal and, and rallying our troops as well in our operations to, uh, to, to stand up our organization. So um, I probably not speaking well for him right now, but uh, his, I think his background kind of speaks for itself there as well. And, and that's really the, you know, one of the biggest things, I think the key differentiators that, you know, Marco was talking about earlier is um, we, we, not only do we have something, but number one, we, we don't have debt. Uh, that's huge. And, and it's, it's, as we look at other companies, even, even some uh, emerging delivery services um, with their, their huge marketing plays, obviously all that costs money, but when you look into them, you see that they raise, you know, multi, I mean, over, you know, 50 million, 80 million, hundred million dollars um, that they're, they're indebted to now. So, you know, this is another reason why we can offer anti-dilution because we're not paying any else, one else back. We're paying, we're paying our investors. Uh, so that's a, it's a really, you know, it's a really big weight off of, I know my shoulders and I, I, can, I can definitely tell it's, uh, it's something for all of our executive team. But the other thing is that a lot of folks that were able to get licenses um, and open and stand up delivery services or even just brick and mortars a lot of these folks um, don't have a total package of actually working in a corporate environment prior to cannabis, or, I mean, just quite frankly, not having the educational background. Uh, a lot of these folks don't, and they don't know how to run businesses. Uh, we do, because we have done it before, and we are people that just migrated from the, the mainstream corporations into the cannabis industry. And so we're running this, honestly, from my, from my opinion, because, you know, I, I sit, I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not working closely in terms of operations as Marco and Josh. From where I sit, you know, we could be selling toilet paper. I'm just looking at numbers. I'm just looking at what drives us, where we need to go next, and, and what's the next play. Um, and and I, I'm, that's, that's the way I see it, and that's the way I, I believe that everyone at this level, you know, should see it. It should be numbers-driven uh, and data-driven. More importantly, analytics is it's also one of my uh, master's degrees in intelligence. That's something that, you know, that's proven, that's a proven model for every corporation. So we are, we are running this thing, uh, you know, on the up and up 
and uh, in, in terms of uh, you know processes and policies, it's pretty black and white. Uh, next slide, Josh. I think that'll that'll do it. Yeah. So we uh, that was a little more than ten minutes, huh, Alan? <laughs> <laughs> It, it did. Uh, you know, I, I should have said that because I, I kind of, I do go off a little bit sometimes. I do these panels probably once a week for uh, for the Cannabis Advisory Council. And um, and I think last week I actually had to carry it for the whole hour because there was 30 people on that call. Everyone was told to speak and no one said anything. So it just became the it became the pineapple express benzinga hour <laughs> so. no it was a, it was a fantastic uh, presentation from from all of the team and uh you really went into a lot of the the key issues you know many of which i had some questions on so i'll try to shorten at this point my questions uh because i know you know we're running low on time maybe we can go a little longer because this is just such a fascinating uh, company and subject matter. So, uh, so uh, uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your history. Uh, how was Pineapple Ventures initially formed? Where are you located? How did the team come together? Sure. Uh, so, you know, we've actually been around um, since around what, 15, 16, Josh? Something around there. Josh is one of the uh, you know, was on the ground uh, coming up. I, I came aboard to assume this position and sort of do a light light housekeeping uh, of a uh, little over two years ago, December of 18. Uh, but Pineapple, you know, Pineapple has been around since about 15. And and, th and this, this is the other um, reason, I'm glad you brought this up, Alan, because when when we're standing up our, our flagship dispensary here at Pineapple, uh, at Hollywood and Vine, a lot of folks, you know, ask us, well, you know, if you guys were, you know, okay, you, you have the delivery locked down for LA, we're arguably number two or three in the, in the in, you know, around here. Um, you know, how do you, where, where's the experience come from to open a dispensary, which probably is, you know, could be a question uh, some of these folks have on this panel. And, and the, the reason, the, the reason we're able to do it is because we've done it um, pretty much a hundred times over. Uh, prior to us doing this ourselves, we were actually the management company for a lot of folks, and we, we've we've helped and stood up about 100 dispensaries across seven states. Uh, so we were already doing this. We just decided to do it for ourselves eventually uh, because we had the brands, and and we just decided to you know we're gonna head we're gonna go ahead and do these things for ourselves and and not just stand up uh, you know other people's dispensaries, whereas they can they can ultimately be a competitor one day. So we saw this opportunity as we saw that the, uh, you know, the states were gonna open up soon. Um, we also have lobbyists there that Josh you know, knows very well that were able to give us some insights on where the tides were turning, not only with California, but across the country in certain states. Uh, so we decided to go ahead and stand up Pineapple Express as a full delivery service with hopes of gaining uh, you know, dispensaries uh, throughout, throughout the state to help support the delivery service, which is again our main model. Very, very interesting. So uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit about the relationships that you have with some of the major brands in the industry. You know, I see on your website you carry <clears throat> a lot of the major brands. Um, you know, how many different products do you offer? Uh, how many are are your product your your own products versus uh, the industry as a whole? Right. So so again, you know, you can consider us. Our, our mobile dispensary, just like your brick and mortar, you're going to walk, you're not going to walk in, we're going to, we're going to drive to you. However, uh, we, we have uh, most of the, you know, potent brands. And one thing about us too, we don't keep things on the shelves and Marco can attest to this. Uh, any product, it doesn't matter if it has a celebrity backing behind it, it has to perform. And I'll let Marco go ahead and get into that in terms of, uh, you know, how many SKUs we carry and, and how we keep, uh, how we evaluate, uh, you know, our current products because we also have a limitation, you know, as a brick and mortar, you can have maybe multiple SKUs, but as a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a delivery vehicle, you cannot. Uh, there's this obviously sheer lack of space and uh, lack of space in terms of how much, qual uh, how much quantity you can carry in terms of dollar amount into uh, on, on a delivery truck. So we really, really scrutinize um, and hold every SKU to a high degree um, because they have to perform. And, and if they can't, then we have to replace them with 
another uh, product. But I'll let Marco go ahead and speak more into that. Yeah, thanks, Sean. Um, obviously, we want to have a healthy mix of the brands that people know and love, um, as well as our owned brands. And, and while there's no magic formula for determining what that product mix look like, um, we're always looking for product market fit. Um, so while we're offering our own brands, it does provide a healthier gross profit margin. Um, we also leverage our category leaders, substantial trade marketing budgets, which are roughly 30% here in the cannabis, uh, California cannabis industry to still maintain above average margins. Um, we have, we closely monitor all of our SKUs performance and we have very strict, uh, milestones for listing, uplisting, delisting, discounting for each of our products. Um, as Sean mentioned, in a brick and mortar location, you're really able to drive people in and, uh, and have a much larger inventory and carry a heavier inventory burden. In delivery, one of the key components is getting people the products that they want and getting them quickly. So for us to do that effectively, we need to limit the amount of SKUs to the SKUs that perform and the ones that are gonna get sell through. So we've done a great job over the past year of bringing that down so that very often what we'll end up seeing is that we're only having the products on our menu that people are purchasing and benefiting from Steve who is not, is not on this call, but benefiting from some of his relationships with the vendors, we're then able to leverage them through the visibility in our delivery service, you know, and, and, and our delivery service would be considered at least a tier one delivery service, uh, tier one dispensary as we get you know, thousands of people hitting on our website on a daily basis. So we understand what, what customers want and we try and provide that to them as, as quickly and as accurately as possible. Excellent. Uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about how were you able to procure such a coveted uh, location at Hollywood and Vine. I know it's very, very competitive getting these licenses awarded by the by the city of Los Angeles and uh, uh, maybe a little background into that. And then also uh, with such a fabulous location, what are your expectations potentially for, you know, the amount of revenue that you can generate in this location, you know, a year out and then several years out from now as that as that gets some uh, uh, fame in that location. Yeah, I mean, it's actually, um, it's a it's a great it's a it's it's actually really great how we actually procured this this license. Um, in terms of the loc well, I'll I'll get to the license part first. We actually uh, we got this through a social equity uh, recipient, and um, this is this is morally great for the company as well because you know this social equity has failed so many folks um, in not only in this state but across the country. Um, at this point, you know, we're actually doing exactly what this was intended to do. Um, and that's to, you know, to change someone's life who has been uh, persecuted by uh, cannabis, uh, in, you know, in the past, whether arrested or whatever, whatever the case may be. Uh, so we're, we actually teamed up with a social equity applicant for this, um, which is, you know, great for the company, great for optics as well. Uh, and in terms of the location, uh, you know, we just, it, it's, again, it's, it's one of these things where if it's just meant to be, it's just meant to be, um, you know, this, we, we had an LOI in place for this location for months before we were able to uh, procure the license or the provisional license. Um, and then once we actually got the license, the, you know, thankfully the location was still available and uh, we beat out a couple of uh, other name brands that are probably have more notoriety than we do uh, across the country. And I don't wanna speak on those folks right now, but um, we, the landlord themselves, and at least we received, uh, was more favorable to us and our vision, honestly. And I'll let Marco get into more of the specifics. Uh, if you wanna embellish on that, Marco, go ahead, but yeah. also with the revenue that we can expect for this location. Yeah, absolutely. And, and as Sean alluded to previously, this was our business model. It was navigating the regulatory framework and understanding how to acquire licenses. And this is something that we were doing for other individuals. And a period of time ago, we realized that for us and us to expand our operations, what we really wanted to do was gain more than a management fee. 
you want to also gain the revenue that comes from having these licenses and, and possessing them. So for us getting this license and this without a doubt was the most coveted dispensary license that was going to be awarded. Um, we were able to, through the social equity program, um, which then brings someone up into the cannabis space that might not have otherwise been able to do that, we we're able to leverage that to actually secure this license. And, and while I won't get into what our secret sauce is, is for doing that, um, we have stood up over 125 different, uh, different licenses throughout the U.S. Um, previously. So we have definite experience in doing that. I myself have been involved in building out at least five different brick and mortars throughout the state of California. So for us, this is business as usual. And in terms of revenue for the first 12 months of operation, we have a conservative estimate and, and, and we want to err on the conservative side because this is a unique economic environment and this is um, that's going to have an impact on consumer spending uh, over the next 12 months. But we, we, we've projected out that we're going to hit about $12 million in top line revenue um, with a pretty quick ramp. And that's what we're um, and that's what we're using as, a, as our basis for projections. And then as you build um, on top of the, the retail walk-in uh, revenue that you have, uh, you know, physically at the, at the location, you have, you know, from the website, uh, from that location. So I, I assume that that revenue stream for the delivery can be on top of what you just mentioned, or is that included in, the, in that number? Well, there's definitely... Definitely room to, to grow from that aspect. And one of the things that we haven't um, really touched on here is that you know, while vertical integration is the key to our operation, um, the goal of us standing up these individual business units is to increase our profit margin and to ultimately bring greater value to our shareholders. So with our delivery service, we currently serve the vast majority of customers in LA and Orange County um, from our Maywood facility. And with that in mind, expansion initiatives are already underway. So we can leverage our model of centralized operation and then standing up individual satellite hubs. One of those satellite hubs is going to be the Hollywood and Vine location, where not only do we have walk-in traditional brick and mortar retail storefront, we also have pickup that Sean spoke about, which is incredibly popular right now in Los Angeles. And this model and following this model and keeping our focus on what our long-term goals are uh, allows us to expand our response time for our on-demand service. So we are able to deploy geo-targeted resources to best serve our customers in the Valley, Orange County, West Side, downtown LA and the surrounding areas. How do you go about uh, procuring your clients, uh, potentially clients when you, when you open these locations and uh, and then, in, and then scaling the business uh, uh, as you go forward. Yeah, this goes back to what I was speaking on previously. Um, you know, with it's customer service and the end goal being customer retention. Um, so we have about a 42% customer retention rate, um, which is above what the standard is in the cannabis space, um, according to what we've been able to benchmark. Um, so every customer that we have, in our system, it's one less customer we have to acquire. Um, we use the traditional channels for our customer acquisitions. Um, we use pay-per-click, programmatic advertising. Um, we have digital advertising, referrals, affiliate, SMS, email, um, in addition to events, out-of-home advertising as, as well. Um, when we see success in, in, in one area, then we're actually able to pour more money into the funnel and we're able to grow that, uh, that one channel. So uh, we wanna make sure that, you know, we're, we're maintaining a healthy, healthy back um, and that's what we keep an eye on. And the, you know, the other things that we can do, you know, what we do to, to, to not only uh, engage folks is, you know, our events that we have, um, you know, there's, and again, this is something that we've been able to spearhead um, and be ahead of this year. And, and really navigating, that's why it's so, so good to have such smart individuals on this team, is to navigate through the COVID climate, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, having some social distance events 
and things like that to where we have a, a model called pineapple pop-ups where we can literally set up shop in our mobile dispenser. We have a sprinter that is outfitted and secured uh, that we can pull up anywhere and we can actually sell cannabis uh, you know, to, to anyone at an event, almost like a food truck pulling up somewhere. So a case in point is uh, we've had We've had um, we've teamed up with a partner downtown LA to uh, right next to the Staples Center and LA Convention Center um, where they have movie nights. So folks, uh, you know, pay for seat, uh, pay for uh, car spaces, and they can roll up and they can actually you know watch a film from their car, socially distanced, and they can order. This person also has a you know an app where they can order uh, you know food, and, and the food truck is there, so it gets immediately delivered. And also they have an option for cannabis, which is us, as us, we are sitting there with our truck and they can order cannabis and we can literally deliver it right then and there, instantaneous. Uh, so we can do that on multitudes of levels. We're doing a, uh, we're also doing a, a tailgate watch party for uh, the Super Bowl, in which case we're do, utilizing the same uh, type of model to where people can, you know, pull up and they'll socially distance, stay in their space and their cars and they can order uh, food and cannabis delivered right to their car. We're, we're on location. So a lot of those things catch on very quickly um, and, and folks spread the word uh, pretty much organically, you know, from those as well, in addition to what Marco said. Now you touched on this a little bit in your remarks. You've got your existing uh, Maywood uh, East LA location. Uh, you're also uh, opening up, I understand, in Palm Springs and uh, potentially elsewhere. Uh, maybe you can just briefly touch on what your overall goals are going forward for expanding and, you know, these other, other markets. In terms of, uh, you know, Palm Springs, that's a, uh, you know, that, that project is, uh, should near completion around the same time, uh, Hollywood and Vinewood, but the end of the quarter, um, that's a, that's a much more, uh, you know, uh, that, that's a, that's a little more impact, uh, it's, it's a little bit different. Um, that's a more, I, I would say, Marco, like a, this is, this is a full dispensary and it's also retail delivery. It's basically totally vertical except for cultivation. So it's a little more complicated of a project and it has taken a little bit longer uh, than Hollywood and Vine, which is just your retail dispensary. So we have everything there. That whole project out in the desert was, was, re was stood up to help um, facilitate the major conferences and, and, and also uh, concerts, Stagecoach, Coachella, you know, all those, all those, uh, you know, big time festivals that was looking to, you know, to reach those folks. Um, right now, we do have offerings for Palm Springs, uh, you know, either for folks investing or we do have options for, for, for folks that want to outright uh, buy the entire project once we complete it, of course. Uh, so we have some folks that uh, flew in from Canada and, and a couple of folks that are out in the desert already that already have cultivation. And we, we basically have all the other missing pieces to their puzzles. Uh, so that's another offering that we, we do have available. Um, we are also um, looking to license as, as we're getting a very big demand, honestly, from um, as these states are opening it up, opening up this year, especially with recreational states opening. We're getting a lot of folks that want to license uh, not only Pineapple Express for dispensaries, but also THC for in-house product. So there's a lot of plays that we're looking at doing there. We're also uh, going to look to, we, we just had a discovery call a couple of weeks ago to emerge into the Arizona market. Uh, and also uh, in Puerto Rico, we're, we're poised to be the first delivery service on the island. Now that's a, that's a very slow playing um, project not because it's an island, um, but, but, but mostly because, uh, you know, before COVID, it was impacted by the hurricanes and it was also impacted by the earthquakes. So that project uh, has, has stalled a bit. However, it's, uh, it's, just on, it's, it's just on a, I wouldn't say pause, it's still moving. But the government there, they just changed governors actually this year. So it's a lot of, a little more political in, in, in PR, but uh, we are poised to stand up there to be the first delivery service there. Sure. Now, just one final question from me, and then I'll, I'll turn it over to Sarah to just take a couple from the audience. Um, what is the ultimate uh, exit stra uh, strategy for, for the company and for the investor? And uh, uh, I know there's a lot of, right now, the SPAC market is very popular. A lot of SPACs are, are merging with private companies and uh, getting into the cannabis space. Uh, well, reverse I, think, I think that, and I think, uh, you know, 
from our angle, we are, that's why we're steadfast doing things the right way, staying debt free uh, into, you know, to, to build this uh, as, to make this as pretty as a package, uh, ultimately for probably a big buyout. Like, a, you know, I'm, I'm talking one of the bigs. Um, once this is, uh, you know, you know, federally decriminalized, uh, it's going to open a lot of doors. I'm sure there's a big pharma and all those folks that are, that are already tapping on our shoulders because I can tell you that they have. Um, you know, I, I think that the, you know, we can't, you know, I don't know who can really compete with those folks if, if, if uh, federally backed uh, companies really want to come in and, and do something. So we're, we're not looking for the big buyout, but honestly, we're, we're going to keep doing what we're doing to, uh, you know, eventually, if that would be the case, we'd have a, a pretty nice wrapped up package to, to deliver. Marco, you want to touch, touch on that a little bit more? Sure. Uh, based upon everything that, that we're hearing um, from the, the capital markets and, and, and from, uh, from, from private equity, you know, it's about five or so years out um, from the time that people are going to really take a serious look at the California cannabis space. Um, by then, the noise should have settled down a bit um, from some of the... Um, you know, you know, some of the glitz and glamour uh, of it, some of the novelty is going to have worn off and um, the consolidation and uh, centralization is going to have uh, already taken effect. So what we want to do is position ourselves to be actually a profitable, significant, uh, a profitable company with a significant footprint. Um, that's something that can be purchased and bolted on to an existing operation or, or, or taken as a standalone operation. And then someone who has hundreds of millions of dollars that's looking to expand um, can then come in and uh, look at, at us as an attractive option. Sounds great. Well, um, those are the questions that I have. Uh, uh, I'm gonna ask Sarah to come back on and uh, take some of the questions that the audience had and uh, and then at that point, we'll be able to wrap it, wrap it up. Great. Thank you so much, Alan. Um, and thank you, Sean, Marco, and Josh for the excellent presentation. It looks like um, a few of the questions were already answered throughout the uh, presentation. Josh, I also noticed that you answered a few questions um, in the Q&A. Uh, thanks for typing that in as well. So I'll go ahead and ask a few of the questions that haven't been covered, and I'll try to wrap um, as quickly as possible. I know that we went over a bit. So, so one of the questions we have here is um, relating to the uh, your revenue. Uh, where do you expect to generate the majority of your revenue from? Will it be the actual uh, brick and mortar store, uh, delivery services, or e-commerce? Well, I would say, I mean, for the purposes of this presentation, we're 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 talking about Hollywood and Vine, so. You know, I would say the majority of that would come in through there, right, Marco? Or do you have any? Yeah, I mean, in terms, of this, that? in terms of this offering right here, um, Hollywood and Vine, and, and just keeping the focus on that right there, the majority of revenue coming from Hollywood and Vine is going to be from traditional brick and mortar. It's not going to be from the curbside pickup, and it's not going to be from from the delivery service. Um, now, in terms of our organization at large, we're talking about multiple business units there. So it's hard to say, um, and I think that's a different conversation for a different time as it pertains to other offerings we, we might have in the future. But to keep the focus on this one um, right here on Hollywood and Vine itself, um, which is what we're talking about, then the revenue stream is definitely coming from anything associated with that brick and mortar storefront. Absolutely. Okay, great. So maybe that kind of answers the other question that we have here relating to your use of funds. How, how are the funds going to be distributed from this investment round? Um, maybe you can touch on that, Marco. Is yes, it, go ahead. Is it primarily going to be used for the brick and mortar space um, in Hollywood and Vine? It's, it's the Hollywood and Vine location. 100%. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The Hollywood and Vine location. Now, while we will leverage our existing infrastructure to um, subcontract our delivery service to meet the delivery needs of Hollywood and Vine specific customers, um, and we'll leverage our brand spend to uh, expand the visibility of the Hollywood and Vine location, 
it's going to go into the Hollywood and buy operations, uh, expanding what we have, building on the efficiency that we have there. And then as we see other opportunities emanating from Hollywood and Vine, that's where the capital is going to go. But it's not going to go to any of our other entities. So if you're investing in purchasing a piece of Hollywood and Vine, um, that's where your money is going to go. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's not. And we do have other offerings, perhaps, you know, for the overall conglomerate of Pineapple Ventures, when those funds would be distributed and disseminated throughout other entities. But this is specifically for Hollywood and Vine. So your investment is going right into this store. Rest assured. Into the Hollywood and Vine. Okay, great. We're There's not doing, Sarah, let me just reiterate. We're not doing a like Series A, Series B, Series C um, on this. So we're looking at a straight path to profitability on here. So the money that we the money that we take in is going to go to fund our operations until we're able to turn profitability, which we expect to to happen um, in relatively short order. That's what we've seen before, and we have no reason to expect anything different. Okay, great. So yeah, it's going to fund your operations for the um, Hollywood and Vine location, which is also your debt free as far as absolutely. And then once we become profitable um, within the first quarter there, then we're not going to be asking for any more funds because we don't need them. Makes a lot of sense. And then just one last question. Um, we have someone that consistently asked about the THC trademark. Do you currently have a line of diverse products under the THC trademark? Right now, we, we kind of um, we're about to reemerge with THC. Um, so I pulled this back about six months ago because this trademark deserves uh, not only quality products, but it deserves uh, a big name backing as well. So we, we actually have one of our investors who, who is a huge name. Again, if I mentioned the person, I believe everyone would know this person. Um, they actually came in for over a half a million into Hollywood and Vine. Um, who was also going to be, uh, you know, taking uh, THC to the next level as well. Uh, so, so right now it's uh, it's basically our, our suite of products that we had um, that we just currently just pulled off the shelf so we can reemerge. Where basically uh, your your flower jars, your uh, your pre rolls, uh, and things of that nature. Uh, so that's what we're doing. But we 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 are going to expand into a full suite of products and and reemerge THC as something entirely brand new. Okay, great. Thank you for that, Sean. And then just a, a quick question on the um, anticipating, how long do you anticipate to secure the lease at the Hollywood and Vine location? You said that was the last question, Sarah. So that's, that's it. Yes. Um, no. <laughs> we have a few questions. I've actually skipped a few questions because we went over. So no, no worries. Um, that's an easy one. We're, we're already the last question. That's an easy one. The lease is already secured and done. Uh, that was what, three months ago, guys, I think. Yeah, it was three months ago. I'm, I'm managing that project. So the build out and standing that up right there. Um, and we've got about, I would say, three weeks. And now, now the caveat being, you know, this COVID and some things are moving a little slower in terms of getting people out there to actually expect, inspect and do plan check um, and on premises. But we could be ready to launch in as soon as three weeks. Okay, great. All right, I think that's pretty much it. And i um, just like to thank everyone and I'll pass it back to Alan so we can uh, wrap. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. Um, well, you know, I'd like to thank uh, the team from uh, Pineapple Ventures and uh, Hollywood and Vine and uh, Sean and uh, Marco and Josh for a uh, fantastic uh, overview of the company. It's really a a uh, fascinating uh, uh, look into what makes a, a very successful company, you know, take off right right out of the right out of the gate. And uh, I think in this case, you know, you're betting on a very proven uh, team of uh, very highly experienced uh, executives, and entrepreneurs, uh, well-educated uh, people uh, that are really tied into the community and. Uh, I think this is going to be one of the most successful companies we've worked on for for many many years, and uh, uh, I'd welcome everyone who's uh, been on this call, or if you haven't had the call yet. What we're going to do is we're going to send out a follow up letter that'll probably go out in the morning 
to uh, everyone that registered and uh, give everyone a chance to, there'll be a video replay, give you a chance if you haven't caught the whole presentation uh, to uh, watch, watch it again and with some highlights uh, about the company and links to their uh, information. There'll also be a, a button to contact for more information from the company on the offering. Uh, you'll be able to click on that and, and uh, be in touch with the company for the offering with documents and materials. So uh, at this point, I'd uh, like to, uh, uh, again, thank everybody and uh, I would appreciate the continuous uh, uh, coming out for our, our ventures and uh, for our uh, different uh, webinars that we've been having on a regular basis. Uh, so uh, Thank thanks, thanks everybody for, for joining today. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy New Year again.